Yo, what's up everybody? Yo, what's up everybody? Ryan Bresnahan back here with another talking point of the day. So today we're gonna to be talking about Tony Robbins' Money Master the Game. This book was a freaking beast. Look at that boy. I don't know how thick it looks on camera, but this boy is 600 something, um, you know, just over six, and I read every freaking page of this book because it was amazing. So about 650 pages. Um, Tony Robbins, if you haven't heard of him and you listen to these videos, number one, I'm quite surprised, but number two, go look into him. Uh, he is that uh, benef beneficial, that foundational. He is a creator, a pioneer in this space of personal development, and he's helped me in numerous ways and helped so many people in numerous ways not only just personal development, but nutrition, but college, but literally the list goes on and developing other companies, developing other countries, helping presidents, business owners, athletes. He is such an amazing human being and reading this book about money on him was uh, very interesting it's, as he's not really known as a money guy. And one thing I love about this book, I won't get too much, uh, into it right away, I wanna go over the outcomes, but is he talks about how he's interviewing people that know a lot more about money than him and he's taking from those people that usually you might have to invest at least $10 million or be a million dollars net worth to just work, to be in a room with them. And he found them, he got them due to his power that he has, his resolution, and he put on paper what they told him and now it's available to all of us. And I think it's just such a blessing to be able to read books that are like that now and have access to that information and access to people of that caliber that have grown their financial life that much and then put it in our own lives. And of course, Tony Robbins, he loves to relate it to what your why is and to more meaningful, more fulfilling parts of life. So not just making money for the sake of money. The title of the book has a big ass money on it. It's not about the money. It's about what you use it for, what you're growing it for, and that therefore actually earns you more money because now it's deeper than just getting up numbers. You know, what are those numbers for? Are you able to help more people? Are you able to, to experience more joy in your life by uh, helping your family or buying something that you're extremely passionate about, like non-material, maybe like a vacation or maybe something that gives you juice, gives you energy, and actually makes you a better person, which is very interesting. Uh, but anyways, outcomes of this video. So number one, I want to talk about what is the book about? We kind of just went over that. And then number two, how the book helped me. And number three, uh, let's go over why you should read this book. You know, why is it important for you uh, to read about money? Because uh, obviously I'm not going to spend six hours going over a 650 page book. Uh, so number one, what is the book about? It's called Money Master the Game. So he looks at it as, hey, the way to make money and use money to benefit you is a game, meaning there's rules to play it. And if you're trying to make money and it's a game, if you don't know the rules, you're not playing the game right. You know, if you're playing soccer and you don't know what the rules for soccer are, you're going to suck because you don't know what you're supposed to do. Same thing with football. You're going to get freaking pancaked. First, you need to know the rules of the game. So the first, like, core of the book is him explaining the myths of money. I don't remember how much there are, like 13. So one of them might be like, oh, you invest in a mutual fund. We've all heard what that's called, a money market account and a mutual fund. Okay, you know, that sounds good. I give my money to someone, to an investor, to a, a financial advisor, to an investing firm, and then they invest my money for me. I don't have to worry about it. They get my returns. They advertise 10% a year or whatever. Awesome, cool. Uh, well, not necessarily true. Number one, let's start breaking it down. So if I give my money to a mutual uh, fund, that mutual fund has, okay, let's just say a portfolio of certain stocks or certain companies that it invests in and then it trades most of the time. And there's one person running this. So each time you trade a uh, stock, you actually, if you, don't, if you do it within like a year, year and a half, you pay a, a capital gain. So a capital gain would mean that I didn't hold it long enough to get a certain percentage taken off. So if I trade it within a year, each time I trade that amount of money, that stock, I lose a certain percentage to taxes. 
Uh, so even then with the day traders, you're losing money just by trading. That's where the term buy and hold comes from. And then number two, on top of that, I think it's 96, I'm pretty dang sure it's this number, 96% of all, let me, let me say this really slowly, 90% of all mutual funds lose money over time. How are they in business? Well, they advertise extremely smart. So they will take the 4% of mutual funds that that company owns or advertises, and those are the ones that they advertise. Hey, for the past five years, for the past two years, we've uh, produced 10% results for our investors, and then the next two years, they just find that 4% that's working again, and they keep advertising that. Um, not only that, they charge fees to fund, to uh, regulate and look at your stock portfolio and, and your and your money. So it's, it'll be like a 1% expense ratio and then a management ratio. And then there's another 1%. And when you're shining it, you're like, oh, 1%. 1% here, 0.5% here, 0.3% here, 1% here, there. The difference between, I don't remember the exact percentage, I think it was 3%. So if there's a management fee, the expense ratio is high, so a 1% expense ratio, uh, meaning that's the amount it costs to buy the fund. And then there's many different, like a laundry list of fees that they charge. Let's just say another one is like a long-term hold ratio expense, whatever, they just come up with bullshit names. So that's 3% total, right? Well, with that 3% total, over time, if you invest, I think it's, you can even make a million if you did not have that 3%. And then if you did have that 3% taken away, it comes out to like 300,000. So that could be the difference between 300 million and a million dollars, or excuse me, 300,000 and a million dollars. That $700,000 difference is what they would take over time with that 3%. So they take more than half your money just by adding on those little percentage points. That's how they stay in business, and that's why they want to use your money. It's not that they're bad people, it's just how that works, right? You don't know that because it's all in that fine print. You still make money off of it, but they, like the, they make a lot more money off of you, and guess who takes all the risk? You do, not them. If your money's gone, that's your money. It's not their money. So they get all the risk or all the reward, and you take all the risk, and if it fails, you take all the losses. If it wins big, you take some of the wins. They take most of the wins. That right there blew my mind because I've always heard of mutual funds. I've always even been told by like big names, oh, invest in mutual funds. Well, guess what? There's way better ways and he goes over all of them in the book. Uh, so that's like section one. Section two goes over some of those ways, uh, not only that he uses, but who he learned it from. So people like Warren Buffett, uh, people like Ray Dalio, People like Paul Tudor Jones, people like uh, T. Boone Pickens, who he built the OSU, uh, Oklahoma State University Stadium. People that have made millions and millions and millions, uh, Paul Icon or Econ, however you say his last name. Uh, if you don't know these, these people, Carl Icon, excuse me. If you don't know these people's names, look them up on Google. Very important members of societies. A lot of them have not only done the billionaire pledge or, or whatever it's called, the giving pledge, where when they pass on, they'll give 90 or 99% of their wealth away to philanthropic uh, measures and, and areas. But these are people that already have created wonderful companies. Jack Bogle, creator of Vanguard, uh, the, the place that got rid of that expense ratio of mutual funds and created index funds. And again, if you don't know all these things that I'm talking about, I didn't either before I read this book. This book makes it so simple to understand what an index fund is, what an ETF is, what a fixed annuity is, what a uh, annuity is in general, what you know expense ratios are, what soft dollar cost averaging is. All these things I had no idea what the hell were, and now I do. Now they're very knowledgeable, very common terms in my own vocabulary because Tony Robbins does an amazing job of explaining it. So kind of getting back on track with what I was saying is all these people are in the book and what he did was interview them and he took the most common or the most uh, common sense or usable techniques that they did over the 50 wealthiest people in America that he felt were wealthy in multiple areas of life, not just financial, right? He said he even interviewed some billionaires that were plain pooped out in life. They were depressed, not happy. He only took the ones that they made a lot of money, but they were also fulfilled. 
they were also living a meaningful life with full of rich relationships and enjoyment out of their own life. These are the people that have achieved immense success. By no means are they perfect, but they've achieved immense success, especially in our American uh, idea of what success is. And again, it's not just financial, it's in all areas of life, which is awesome. He interviewed 50 of them, took the best knowledge from all of them and put them in this book. That's what the second section is, is looking at what they said. And then the third section, which is, I love all of them, but this one just meant a lot to me. It's okay, now I've showed you what not to do, I've showed you what to do. How are we gonna do it? How can we be practical? There's literally a checklist where he'll say, stop reading, don't read past this point until you do this. And I love that because it puts action, it puts your word where your mouth is. If you keep reading past and you don't do it, he's not gonna know, nothing's gonna happen. Like that's literally it, nothing's gonna happen. If you stop reading and then you do it, something's gonna happen. Some action's gonna take place, some result is gonna take place. And I'm very proud to say this book, I read through every single page and every single time there was something that said stop, do this, I did it and I did it 100%. I even read all the way to the index. That was the first time I've ever done that in a book. The last 20 pages were like about his companies and I just, I read all of that and it was awesome. Uh, and then the last section, yeah, like I said, is making it meaningful to you, which is awesome. He asks you to journal about, hey, why, you know, why do you want to make money? What makes you happy? What lights you up like a Christmas tree? What brings you the most passion and inspiration in the world? And then how can you use your finances to fulfill that? And he talks a lot about giving too. I, I ha every single proceed that this book made was donated to Feeding America, and he matched every single proceed, and he's fed almost close to a billion people, maybe even a billion people by now, because this book was written in 2014. Uh, it's 2020 now, so it's six years ago, and his goal was to increase every single year by 100 million. So I think it's, it's, it's an overall great book. It's helped me so much because I know what all of those terms are. And like I said, I've implemented all of the action steps in this book, and so many things in my life are automated now, especially for finances. I don't think about it. Whenever I do, I understand what's happening. I feel, I mean, I feel like, I don't wanna say an expert, because I don't study it, but compared to the relative and normal population, I'm a financial expert. Because he breaks down such complex things into such simplicity, which really money is very, making money is very simple. It's not about all these cool new stocks, not about all the trade here, do this, download this app, blah, blah, blah. It's about, Buy, right? Find an index, find something, use it, and hold it. Long-term compound interest. That's what Warren Buffett is all about. That's what all of those people are all about. They're all about the same thing. And we get muddled down by all the sexy, fad, same things, new app, new stock here and there, Bitcoin, whatever. Not that you can't make money off of that. It's just that is not the way that these people have done it. That's a great way to make money short-term. Not to say that people haven't done it, but if you keep going for those things, you're bound to lose because you're playing against the house. You can't control the environment. You can't control what's gonna happen. You can't control what fad is gonna come next. You can't control what day it drops a bunch. You can't control the market. You can't guess the market. So don't try to play against the market, play with the market. That's, that's sort of in a nutshell. And again, it's so hard to describe 650 pages, but that's the best way to describe it is Number one, buy an old, be smart, use compounding interest to your advantage, and then read the freaking book. That's number three. So I've already used it to, to automate a lot of things in my life. I'm making money while I sleep. I'm making money right now. Uh, if you invest in anything, yeah, you are, but I have it automated to where I don't even have to look. I only look four times a year, and every time I do, it's fun. Making money for me while I'm sleeping is fun. It's not something that I stress out about looking on the stock market, I know that no matter what, I'm going to be great, I'm going to be financially wealthy in the long run. And that is a very good feeling. Very much worth the 650 pages. Uh, that's, all those reasons are reasons why you should read the book. It's great, greatly written, it's Tony Robbins, it's a big book, it's a beast. I feel very proud that I read it because I know what all these things mean. I feel very confident in my ability to stay and be financially wealthy. And then also now I can uh, know what my goals are more about making money. I know what my why is. I know 
why I want to make money. I know why I want to use it to help others. I know why I, I'm excited to find new ways to make money. And I know why I can use it to influence and, and enhance my own life, again, by helping others. So greatly written book, I highly recommend it. Um, this thing will change your life. I mean, think about how good it would feel to know you have a financial plan. You don't have to rely on anybody and it's something meaningful and fulfilling to you. Like literally just think about that. What would it feel like to have money sitting in the bank or sitting in the market rather? I have money that is making money on itself and this is going to fulfill me and be extremely meaningful because I know what I want to use it for. And you have complete confidence in the ways that you can store money now. You don't have to check, you don't have to look at things. It does it all automated for you based on the systems that we have now in pretty much every single bank. That's not like I'm doing a secret bank or anything, I'm just normal accounts. How would it feel to have everything automated and you know it's fulfilling and meaningful to you? That's what this book can offer you. Like I'm not bullshitting right now. This book has definitely been one of my favorite books in my life. Uh, it's an awesome read. It's, it's a beautiful book. It's a beast and it's worth every single page. I, I love this book. I'm, I'm keeping this. I'm going to give this to my kids. This book, this book changed my life. So it's awesome. Uh, if you don't think, or if you think that, uh, you know, 15 buck investment can change your life, take the plunge and change your life. Peace.